Hi, and welcome to this presentation on textiles and the environment, brought to you by Use Again. In this presentation, we'll discuss the environmental impact of the clothing industry. The data is taken from a number of European life cycle impact studies. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to find studies made in the U.S. We'll also discuss the impact the textile industry has on climate change. The amount of greenhouse gases saved in reusing textiles is far superior to commonly recycled materials, except for aluminum. Let's start by reviewing what a product life cycle assessment consists of. This is a chart showing the material flows related to textiles in the UK. In the top left, you can see the extraction of raw materials to produce fibers that flow along with imported fibers and intermediate textile products into domestic manufacture of textiles. From there, textiles flow to export and to domestic consumption along with imported textile products. Finally, the post-consumer textiles are collected and a very small portion is directed to reuse domestically and abroad. To determine that environmental impact, we divide the life cycle into five phases and examine the impact for each phase. The material phase is where the fiber is harvested or manufactured. The production phase is where the textile is made. The transport phase is involved in every step of the way. The used phase is where the consumer wears it. And the disposal phase is to the end of the road. Now we also have to take into consideration the type of fiber that the clothing is made from. The graph on the left shows global demand for natural and man-made fibers. In 1990, a majority of the textiles were manufactured in cotton, wool, silk, and other natural fibers. Whereas since the early 2000s, production has shifted to predominantly man-made fibers. You can see here that the growth in consumption from 1990 to 2004 has been almost entirely driven by synthetic fibers. On the graph to the right, you can see the growth in man-made fibers, broken down into polyester, nylon, acrylic, cellulosics, with polyesters responsible for almost all the growth. Now, it's also important to examine each phase in the life cycle and to examine products with different fibers. So here we'll use two examples, a cotton t-shirt and a polyester jacket. Each will have their distinct environmental impact, as you can see right here. First, let's start with the cotton t-shirt. Let's look at what processes are involved in each phase of its life cycle. Although there's evidence of cotton cultivation as early as 8,000 years ago in Mexico, a well-developed cotton industry first evolved in the Indus Valley about 7,000 years ago, where some methods for spinning and fabrication continued to be used until the modern industrialization of India. In actuality, cotton was grown in much the same fashion in most of the world until about 60 years ago. Here it is being picked in Oklahoma in the 1890s, and here's cotton being picked in Georgia in the 1940s. The cotton industry changed when agrochemicals were first introduced. During the Second World War, the chemical industry had been inventing new ways to kill living things. It turned out that some of these chemicals could kill not only people, but bugs and weeds. And so, the agrochemical industry was born. They were first introduced in mechanized agriculture in the 50s and 60s and even more recently in less developed societies. For example, in Pakistan's Punjab province, as recently as 1983, only five to 10% of the cotton crops were treated with chemicals. Whereas in 1991, agrochemicals were applied to 95 to 98% of the cotton crops. Today, cotton is grown in tropical and subtropical regions around the world. 75% is grown in developing countries, and 25% in wealthy countries, such as the United States and Australia. The largest producers in order are China, India, the United States of America, 
Pakistan, and Brazil. The United States is the world's largest exporter of cotton, while most of the crop in China, India, Pakistan, and Brazil is used in domestic textile industries. Here are some facts about cotton cultivation in India, the world's second largest producer of cotton. According to a study released in 2009 examining the environmental impact of one t-shirt produced in India, the result from the material, production, and transport phases is as follows, in metric and U.S. measurements. You can also see the impact of one pound of cotton t-shirts in the far right column. Now the same study also examined the impact of the used phase and found that the washing temperature and use of a dryer could have as much or more impact as the other life cycles put together. In the worst case scenario, washing with a less efficient machine at 140 degrees Fahrenheit and using a less efficient dryer, the greenhouse gas emissions are five times greater from the used phase than if the t-shirt is washed in cold water and air dried. Another study from the UK in 2006 showed essentially the same picture. 60% of the life cycle energy is consumed in the used phase of a cotton t-shirt that is washed at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, tumble dried, and ironed. The UK study also compared the toxic impact of regular cotton compared to organic cotton. For regular cotton, 93% of the toxicity is contributed by the material phase, while for organic cotton, that is reduced to 7.5%. Organic cotton makes up only a fraction of consumption due to the high cost, but production is growing by 50% annually. Organic cotton, however, uses the same or larger quantities of water for irrigation as regular cotton does. Now let's take a look at the case of the polyester jacket. What are the processes involved in its life cycle? For synthetic clothing, most of the environmental impact is due to petroleum and energy use, and save for when there's an oil spill, this mainly takes the shape of greenhouse gas emissions. The same study, released in 2009, examined the environmental impact of one polyester jacket produced in China, and found that CO2 emissions from material, production, and transport phases was about 16.8 pounds, or about 15.3 pounds for one pound of polyester jacket. The used phase has a lesser environmental impact for the polyester jacket than the cotton t-shirt because it gets washed less frequently and at lower temperatures. This graph compares CO2 emissions for a t-shirt in four different scenarios and for a polyester jacket. In all scenarios, the garments tumble dried. You can see from the size of the cross checkered parts, the large impact tumble drying has. So let's shift gears for a minute and talk about the importance of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. According to Wikipedia, global warming is the increase in the average temperature of the Earth's near surface air and oceans since the mid 20th century and its projected continuation. This graph shows the rise in global temperatures over the last 150 years, as the Industrial Revolution started to gather steam. In the last 60 years, temperatures have increased at an increasing pace. Over the past 16 years, an international commission of scientists have held a series of meetings and established a conservative estimate of where we're heading. Groups of scientists, think tanks, defense departments have created their own models to try and predict the global temperature increase over the next 100 years. The temperature increase will not be evenly distributed across the globe. On this map, the darker areas are where the increase will be greater than the average, notably the Arctic and the Amazon.
One way you can already measure the effects of global warming is by looking at the frequency of climate-related natural disasters. These are such as floods, droughts, wildfires, hurricanes, etc. When comparing with earthquakes, there is a clear increase in natural disasters over the last 20 to 30 years. Another place where the effects of global warming can be seen is in our ice cover. For example, this is a picture of the Grinnell Glacier in Glacier National Park in 1850. Here it is again in 1980, again in 98, and then finally in 2005, where it's almost gone. How can we be sure that the concentration of greenhouse gases is increasing? Well, we have data to prove it. Here you see the trends in five major greenhouse gases that make up about 97% of the direct climate forcing effect. Note that the concentration of CFCs has peaked and CFC 11 has been declining since the 90s due to legislation that banned the use of these gases in aerosol cans and AC units. Well, isn't this increase in CO2 and temperature just part of a natural cycle that spans thousands and millions of years and therefore can't be attributed to humans? Well, no. The present CO2 concentration and global temperature is far above what the Earth has experienced over the last 650,000 years. As this graph shows, the end of every ice age has caused a spike in CO2 concentration in the atmosphere, but this time is different. The CO2 in the atmosphere today is way above anything recorded before. So what could we do to fight global warming? Well, we can reduce our carbon footprint by emitting less greenhouse gases. One way is to reuse clothing with use again. So let's review how much CO2 you can save by reusing clothing with use again. Either way you cut it, at 7 or at 14.7, the greenhouse gas savings from reusing textiles is far superior to most commonly recycled materials, except for aluminum. Thanks for listening.